Yeah, so we got to get you. 1030. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all very much for coming here. Uh, so we are going to start the... Uh, we're going to start the proceedings promptly as we have two gentlemen up front who are actually running for this state committee man position who are going to have to leave at an earlier time than well anticipated. Obviously, they have their own businesses and objects to go on there. So if you have any questions, please write them down and pass them to the left. We'd appreciate it, especially for the two on there. If you have any questions specifically for them, please do so. But we're going to just start off with just a general announcement of what they are going to well, what their whole campaign is on that they're running for in the first place. So we are going to start with uh, Mr. Germeroff. Yes. Can That's you explain what the, the position the is first? Oh, yes, for the state committee man position. Yeah. So the state committee man position is supposed to be the representative of the precinct for Lake County up to the state, uh, what's it called, to the uh, state RPOF. party, to the RPOF, the Republican Party of Florida. So they are representative to that. They are also so supposed to encourage and get out the vote for Republicans specifically. Now, hey, Lord, I'm not tripping on my words today, a little bit of a rush. But their main purpose is to be the word of the people to those who are possibly not able to interact with Lake County as much as they would like to. They are our lifeline to it, and they are the thread that keeps them grounded to here in Lake County. So, uh, well, we'll start off. Right. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jonathan Germeroth. I was born and raised here in Lake County. I am a father. I am a husband. I am a business owner. I also work for a large holding company that operates throughout Central Florida, Lake County here primarily. Um, and I was, I am a lifelong Republican. Every year that we continue to divide our party is a year that we're going backwards as a Republican Party, and that's why I'm running today. Um, I was back in 2010, Mr. Smith brought me to my first REC meeting, brought me and engaged me with the young Republicans. It was beautiful. It was brilliant what we were doing in this county. And that has turned to absolute devastation, what's going on with our Republican Party. It's sad. We're so divided. We're so unorganized. It's sad. And we've got great volunteer. We've got great people working behind the scenes, getting our name out. But then we're fighting amongst each other. This isn't what our party needs. We need somebody to unite this party. We need somebody that's able to change the culture. And that's what I do in business. I look at my employees, I listen to my employees, I empathize with my employees. I understand their needs and I work with them as a group. And we are going to continue that path with me in this position. I believe that we have a future with our party. I believe in the future for my kids and for their kids in this party. As long as we figure it out, guys. We're smarter. The room is smarter than me individually, so everybody needs to be involved in this movement. Um, I will also say that when or if this county decides to put me in this spot, I will be the ear for every Republican not just a small group that says, this is our agenda, this is our fight. There are so many of us out here that have a voice that has been shut down by some of our politicians. It's sad. We, we forgot that. And when are we getting back to our roots? When are we going to go back to being the party that's accepting people that have different opinions and understand that just because they have a different opinion doesn't make them less Republican than you? So... August 20th, look at the ballot, vote with your heart, not your political agenda, and get somebody that's willing to make the changes that this party needs. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Smith, if you may. All right, well, you already know me, good, bad, or different. Um, uh, so I won't talk much about myself except to say um, I've been a business owner for 37 years, Lake Tyron Auto having a blast. I love this community. I even love Bruce Duncan. Bruce is like my hero. He used to be my, when he was younger, still is in some ways. It's, well, I like to have as nice looking hair as he has too. But um, the bottom line, uh, Bruce knows how much I love him. But anyway, uh, amazing count. We have the best constitutional officers you could ever ask for. Um, I've been a little upset by our uh, county commissioners in the past, to be honest, because they brought in this gaming facility around here, which is nothing but trash, and if any of you guys have a different opinion, I'd be happy to explain it all to you. But the quickest way would be just call the sheriff or some of his staff, he'll tell you, 
why th these things are bad things. Our county commission allowed it to happen on our watch, okay? But here's the thing with them. I give them credit. They fixed it, okay? And like, like them, I, uh, I made one big mistake as state committee. I supported this guy named Anthony Sabatini, who, the youth movement, that, and Jonathan, I love everything you said. The only thing I question, and I know you're not that guy, so I'm, I'm not trying, but you get a guy that's a novice, like Sabatini, who's full of himself, and you're not full of yourself. No. But you are young. <laughs> but you are young. As a matter of fact, Jonathan, I've already kind of agreed, um, if I win, I'm going to nominate him or encourage him. I'll go ahead and endorse him right now for chairman of the Republican Party of Lake County. Okay, we'll have that election come up. We need to get rid of Sabatini. We need young people. I like young people. That's why I ran for this job in the first place, right? I wanted to inspire, get young males, females. We had Jennifer Sullivan, who was doing a great job. A bunch of good people. Because, frankly, Bruce and I are getting old. We can't do this forever, right? And, and by the way, I've been trying to get Bruce involved. But Bruce, get off your butt and get in the REC. I know it sucks right now, okay? But, you know, Jonathan's willing to do it. you got to get involved, too. And any of you other guys who are sitting on the sidelines, please get involved now. Don't wait until you see who wins this race or who wins in November. That's the problem. We had a group of people come in about two years ago. They came in for three or four months. They were very, very, pretty faithful. Then comes election time, they lose. And they go home. I'm not going to say who they are. Some of them are running for office. But I don't want to embarrass them because, you know, that's... I mean, they, had, they may have good reasons. I don't know besides that. But the reasons I was given was I got better things to do and waste my time with something when I can't help. But guys, I've been doing this for 15 years in REC, and Bruce knows I've been doing politics for 25, 30 years. And I'll tell you what my thing was, and the reason Jonathan got into it, he runs a business, he has success, he sees I can help things, right? And you're going to help things whether you win or not because you're going to be involved. I'll make sure you do. What about the position, Ralph? Talk about the position. The position. Yeah, he, did a good, he did a good job about the position. Very good. It's basically a liaison between the county and the, and the, um, and, and, I mean the, the people here in Lake County Republicans and the state party, right? So we communicate both ways. We take issues up there. We bring them back down here. What I don't think is due, and I think some of them are good. I supported one the other night. Is lately <coughs> we've been doing all these resolutions. I'm going to be blunt, guys. People at RPF do not give a rat's a double s about what we think about Tallahassee. That's the problem. They don't. Exact. No, it, it's the reality. No, it's, it's reality. You know why? Because we have no credibility. And you know why we have no credibility? Because Anthony Sabatini has gone up here and poisoned the well. Yeah. I have talked to Brenner. I've talked mm. to um, 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 the former uh, Senate president, who's now our ad commissioner, Will, 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 Will yeah. Simpson. And I've told these guys, and I, I did learn one thing. Guys in high leadership don't get over things as easy as I thought they would. I thought they'd have to take their skin, but they don't. Maybe if they were tire salesmen, they wouldn't. But anyway, bottom line is they, they, they're they done. Even even DeSantis don't like Sabatini, and Sabatini's been friendly with DeSantis, right? As best he could be in support of Trump. And so the, the biggest thing, you see why I wore this shirt tonight? So all you guys that think Sabatini is the guy, you're automatically going to support one of my opponents, probably... Probably the one that Sabatini invited, which is Chuck. And by the way, let me say something about Chuck too. Uh, before you Chuck do, Mr. Smith, Chuck is a girl. Before you do, Mr. Smith, oh. uh, we do have only three. Oh, don't have, yeah. I gave you a little bit of extra time because it was a good My conversation. My apologies. But there is a I used to do a radio show and I didn't know when to shut up. So <laughs> <laughs> good. But okay. you can see obviously that they're very well conversated between each other, so it's working out well. Mr. McNulty, we did not want to cut off your time on there, so people. So how much time do I have? Three minutes. Three minutes. Yes. <laughs> So most of you probably don't know me. Know me. My name is Chuck Benoit. I am currently the District One uh, representative to the REC. Um, I'm also vice president of the South Lake Republican Club. I'm an affiliate of the Institute on the Constitution and a facilitator of the American View of the Constitution course. I'm also a member of the Republican Liberty Caucus and the Florida Republican Assembly. I am down in the grassroots. I'm doing stuff. I, uh, we talk about turning uh, Florida red. Well, I was part of it. every uh, second Monday in, Cle in uh, Claremont and in Groveland. I've been busting my hump to help turn Florida red, only to find out that the Republican Party is bluer than blue. <laughs> Any Republican that could have voted for the Live Local Act. <coughs> It's a travesty. 
It's a travesty. And yeah, we are a divided party because we have a republic we have a Republican, very red community and a very blue Republican Party. That is sad. I'd like to also note that in these grassroots organizations, the Florida Re uh, the uh, Republican Liberty Caucus endorsed me. The Florida Republican <laughs> Assembly endorsed me. These people who are out there busting their humps week after week, month after month, year after year, they endorsed me. Who, who endorsed other people? The establishment. So the question really is, do you really want a blue Republican Party? Or would you rather work to make it more red? I came down here to make Florida red. I accomplished my reasons for coming to Florida, only to find out that that's not really the problem. I was at a recent RPO meeting, and the first thing the speaker started doing was excoriating the group because it appears that some Republicans are calling <coughs> other Republicans rhinos. And a gentleman in the back of the room jumped up and said, if I gave everyone in the room a piece of paper and asked them to define the term rhino, I'd get a hundred different answers. Now I'm a, just a, a visitor, so I'm thinking to myself, of course, but that's not the problem. The problem is giving everyone in the room a piece of paper and asking them to define the term Republican, because you'd still get a hundred different answers. As, a, as an affiliate of the Institute on the Constitution and a facilitator of the actual Constitution, I actually teach the Constitution, we actually have a definition of the, of the term republic. The first two, uh, R, E, R, E, the thing, public, public, we would say the public thing or the law. And the idea <coughs> is that the law is the same for everybody. Uh, okay, well, the Republican Party doesn't play it that way. Anymore. Thank you. Very spirited conversation on there. I'm sure we'll develop further on there. I appreciate you all for being up here in the first place, just trying to make the Republican Party better and whatever vision that you have on it. Obviously, the people will decide which one they want, but all of you, thank you very much for these. Now, we're going to get on to the first question from our audience, a well printed one at that. So, uh, for each candidate. Uh, we will obviously start with you, Mr. Germer. Uh, so, uh, the Republican Party is severely fractured at national, state, and local levels. This has led to paralysis in Washington, infight in Tallahassee, and tremendous amount of anger and contention here in Lake County. What will you do personally and immediately to heal these fractures and return the Republican Party to effective, focused, and successful political entity that it was not so very long ago? It's a simple answer. So, my opponents, Chuck and Ralph, laid out that they're so involved in this party that has been degressing since the day I got out of it. Since the day I removed myself from the toxicity. He's so involved, he's so involved, but we continue to fail as a party. So my objective would be to bring new blood, myself and other people. I'm going to get our elected officials back involved in our party that want nothing to do with us because we're so toxic. I'm going to bring Lake County together by making it a home and a happy place for everybody to serve this party. It's simple, guys. New blood, new direction. Make the changes. That's all it takes. Thank you very much, sir. All right, uh, Mr. Smith, the same question to okay. you. Uh, what will you do to imme personally, immediately, heal the fractures and return the party to effective focus political entity? Okay, only one correction. Since you got out, you visited. You never were a member of the RUC. Right? I was a member of the Oh, you were a member? Correct. Yes, sir. All right, so it's been a while. I just don't remember you. I've been yeah. here since 2005. You brought me. Thank you. Good. I'm, yeah, I'm glad I did that. I wish you wouldn't stay around. We might not be in this. But, but by the way, can I ask him a question before I answer the question? If I win, if I, will, you, will you run for chair? I will not answer that today. I will never say never to anyone. Bribe. And okay. I'll leave it there. Well, that's good, bribe. Last time, four years ago, one of the opponents said, I'll be here the day after, win or lose. And we saw him one more time. But thank God I saw the other day he's on the list to join again. So after eight years, he's coming back. Thank God for that. But anyway, with that said, your question is really good with whoever asked it, okay? Let me, let me be clear about one thing. I can't do nothing nationally. We can just do one little thing. Maybe somebody said, oh, that's a great idea. 
that could happen. I'm worried about Lake County. So here's the, here's my go-to question. I, I, I wish Bowen and Trunow and Ebo and uh, CJ were here, or you know Sabatini, Webs. I wish everybody's run was here right now. God ask them this direct question, and I will at some point in time. So if you're here and you're one of their friends or candidates, you support them, make them aware, because I want them to have an honest answer. I don't want to get a gotcha question. I want the honest, thought out question. Will you <coughs> promise? On August 21st, if you are not victorious in your primary election, to support, endorse, and work for the nominee of the Republican Party of Lake County in that race that you just fight for? If the answer is absolutely yes, I like you. You're my friend, whether I'm supporting you now or not, okay? If your answer is like Laura Loomer's was, well, I won't support the Democrat, but I, I will not help her damn well because he's just as bad. If your answer is like that, get the hell out of my county in this race right now. I don't even want you as a candidate, okay? That's the bottom line. That's how we bring back. I don't have a problem with Vickers debate, <clears throat> questions. Let's get after it. Let's be let's be respectful. Let's don't be nasty or dirty or, you know, over the top. But that's the idea. That's why it's a primary. We have different people, different ideas. I love Chuck to death. Look, I don't know Chuck that well, but but when if you don't win this, I'm going to ask you to do something. I want you to get involved in life-wise because what you're talking about is a very important thing, and that's the Constitution. Where you and I might disagree is I don't know that people in Tallahassee give a rat's you know what about the Constitution. I'm sorry to say that, right? And a lot of older adults who are like, I mean they do, but their understanding isn't going to change because you or I will it or even because we try to teach them. But you get life-wise, that's what that's all about, and that's my passion is life-wise.org. I'm out of time, so I'll, I'll tell you more about it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Well, yeah, radio personality he used to advertising everybody but himself. He's good on there. All right, Mr. Manoa. Uh, yeah, well, um, that's true. Uh, that's the biggest problem in our nation. We don't follow the Constitution. But uh, the reality is nobody, whether it's the grassroots or whether it's the uh, politicians, they don't really know the, the Constitution. They have no idea. Our nation isn't that far off. Our, our politicians are very far off. So what would I do uh, immediately? I would immediately start talking to other representatives from other counties uh, regarding uh, what's happening here in, in Lake County. These gentlemen obviously are not happy with um, what we're doing here, but quite frankly, the, um, the literally the entire group at the REC it, uh, supporting Anthony Zepatini, other than a handful of people that... <coughs> Don't like him. They don't like him because he's angry. Okay, well, why is he angry? He's angry because his Republican Party acts like Democrats. You look at the Live Local Act. Look at it yourself. What the Live Local Act is, it's the very same thing that uh, Obama tried to shove down our throats in 2014 and 2015. It's the exact same thing. As a matter of fact, it's even worse. And do you realize how many Republicans voted for it? The entire Senate and most of our Congress. It's a Democrat bill. And what it does is it strips the cities and the counties in Florida of their responsibilities to take care of the citizens in their community. Do you understand? That is not simply an attack on Florida. It's attack on the nation. Because we're, as Florida goes, so the nation goes. We can do something about uh, the federal government. We can turn the Republican Party of Florida red again. Thank you, Mr. Miller. All right. All right. So, uh, next question. Oh, so in a quick this is more of a reference to what y'all were going on earlier, but it will be kind of a focused one on there. Why do you want this position, Mr. Grimmeroff? Change. Change the culture of this party that I am in love with. I love the Republican Party. I love what it stands for. I love our principal values, and um, I would like to see us get back to it, but more as a family. Change the culture. Change it to where we can do it together as a team. One objective, one party. We've yes. lost that. Thank you, sir. And uh, Mr. Smith, why do you want to this position? I want to continue what I started. We had some good success to begin with. Um, I thought Walter did a good job as chairman. 
managing all the pieces. But I've always maintained we need everybody. And Bruce can tell you, a lot of people that are supporting Jonathan perhaps can tell you, I've reached out to a lot of them, tried to get them to get back in. And for one reason or another, and I'm not going to, because like, for, I'll just give you an example. I was a bad Republican this year, guys. I did not come to our Lincoln Day dinner. I did not even support it. I've probably given, uh, along with Bill Mathias, more money to the Republican Party in Lake County in the last 20 years than anybody in the county. Okay, look, maybe somebody out in the state's done more, I don't know. But bottom line is, it's not about the money, it's about the fact I request our chairman one thing. Do not have it on a Friday night during high school football season. I have a grandson who's going to be a five-star guy when he's a senior going to Alabama or Florida or Georgia, wherever the heck he wants to go. I will not miss that for anything. He has 10 games a year unless we make the playoffs, then it might be 12. <coughs> but there's 355 nights that you could have this. I'll be there and support it 100%. They did on Friday night anyway. So I was a bad Republican in that respect. I will concede that. The bottom line is, Johnson's exactly right on a lot of these things there. What I think he fails maybe to understand, but I'm glad you're running because I love you. And I, I want you to replace me. I'm just not, you know, not on August 20th. Okay? <laughs> or I want you to be my chairman and sometime in December. But the bottom line is, I want someone like you. Maybe you don't want to do it. I don't know. Maybe your wife will do it. You be a, I like, well, you're a female. You can't be staked with me. I'm sorry. You can be staked with any woman now. Okay. But anyway, we're Chuck. Chuck's a good man. And by the way, let me just say one last thing here real quick. Both these guys are awesome People. They would be great state community. Now, you, we got different visions, different ideas, different ways from getting from A to Z and all that. But I, I know I've got to know Chuck. We had breakfast, and I don't want to tell all your stuff, but I'll tell you, this is a good man. He help, he loves God. He tries to do the right thing. And he's doing what he feels like the Lord's leading. As I, as I think they would concede that I'm doing, although I'm a little bit crazy. And Jonathan is is a little bit more. <laughs> Even Marie loves me sometimes, right? Every now and then you watch something I say. But anyway, Jonathan is like, I played Santa Claus for his kids 20 years ago. Right? And for his house, gave him gifts, dressed up like Santa Claus, all right? So we're all friends, and we're all unified. The difference is, and what we're going to do, I think all three of us will be, we're going to set an example for these other mokers who are running for office, who are going to get nasty and pointed and do say terrible things about each other. These guys, who cool it. Jets. At the end of the day, I want is, is state commitment. You, okay, you asked about the definition. One of the jobs we talked about the basics, but one of the jobs that I see it is to try to do, and I've done successfully to some extent, but not successfully to the extent I would like, is when the primary thing is over, I don't want the call marks to be so deep that there's scars in the nominee. Because I'm telling you right now, it's not matter because the Democrats are so sorry in this county. But they're going, to, they're going to become, their numbers are going to grow one day. And we need to make sure we don't eat ourselves and cannibalize our own party, our own nom our eventual nominee by the people who didn't win. That's it. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Wonderful. And uh, Mr. What was the question? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, what do you, why, why do you want this position, Mr. Benoit? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, the name is Benoit, Benoit. or Benoit. Either one, I'll, I'm happy with it. Benoit. 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 And let me tell you something. I've been out knocking on doors for several months now. And, um, and we sat down and figured out last night, it's at least 98 to 2. The Republicans in, the, in this community understand me and those who are on my side of this situation. We find 2 out of 100 who say, oh, I love what's happening in the Republican Party in Florida. Two out of a hundred! Mm -hmm. something, something needs to change to unify the party. Yes. It's the Republican leadership. That's what needs to change in order to unify the party. Do you, do you understand that? Mm -hmm. When the Republicans govern like Democrats, you can't even call them rhinos. You can't even call them rhinos. Okay? But that's what's happening. Okay? The, the heart and soul of our nation is being fought in the Republican Party. The battle is being fought in the Republican Party. The Democrats have already negated 
every aspect of the American way they could possibly uh, demolish. And now it's happening in the Republican Party. We have to stop it at the Republican Party. Why? I think I can help. All right. So. Uh, you can consider this a lightning round because we have very little time for the <coughs> gentlemen that are going to be having to go soon. So, uh, let's see here. Only a minute to answer. It'll be an interesting one on there. Uh, well, well, if you may, sir, uh, define a rhino, please. <laughs> Obviously, it's Republican name only. Um, but it is a elected official, in my opinion, that doesn't stand up to our values or our principles, and it's not something that we have in Lake County, so it's really not a name that I need to use. And uh, Mr. Smith, uh, define a rhino. Well, as you see, he nailed it perfectly. I mean, that's what the words are. But what does, how do I interpret uh, Republicans in name only? In respect that, let, let me just be real clear. For anyone here, if you haven't done this lately, I did it a while back, and I wish I'd done it before this. That's a good question. I should have anticipated it. Go to uh, on your website and look at the Republican platform, national platform. Do you all know when that was formulated? 16. Thank you. You guys are bright. Okay, most people say, oh, it was done in 2020. No, they liked the one in 16 so good they kept it in 2020, okay? Then go to the Democratic one and read that one. If you are not a Republican, okay, and, of course, you know, your name only, or America first, but, of course, I call it Anthony first lately in his respect. But bottom line, if you're not for, for, for the whole blanket, that's the thing. We've got to get everybody together. We've got to get quit sniping. A few years ago, before, before <laughs> Walter and all the... Thank you, uh, you, all thank you Mr. Uh, Sorry. Uh, sorry. Okay. It was a landing round. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. He's, but no, he has a lot to say. Isn't I have a disadvantage. I'm a pretty good guy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I don't have to leave, so I don't know why I need to be in the lightning round. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you can oh, stay you afterwards with yeah, that more time. Like okay, so okay, so yeah. give us twice um, long. <laughs> You have to understand the definition of a Republican before you can understand the definition of a rhino. Because once you understand what, who, what a Republican is, then everything else is a rhino, okay? Or a Democrat. So a Republican is someone who understands law. Our nation was founded on natural law. Now, uh, our founding fathers uh, quoted uh, William Blackstone several times and William Blackstone's definition of natural law is the laws of nature and nature's God. And basically what he said was, if any law violates natural law, it can't be law. Anywhere. Not just in our country, but anywhere, in any nation, on the face of the globe, at any time. That's what our founding fathers understood about the law. Now you tell me that there are Republicans that don't understand that. Of course there are. Most of them are in government. Our nations violate God's law, and because they violate God's law, our nation is in deep trouble. Not because God is after us, because natural law has no different consequences, but if you jump off the side of this building, gravity will find at, at the bottom of the line, gravity will be there explain to you what the, pro, what the, certain, what the uh, end result of jumping off the side of a building is. Okay? Well, natural law is there to explain to a society what happens when we start attacking God's law. Yeah, a, a very strange, yeah, a very strange type of thing on there. Yes, ma'am. I just want to be courteous to you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Right. We'll do one more. One more? One yeah. more? Yeah, tired yeah. guys. Oh, one more. Jeremiah. Jeremiah's. Hang on. <laughs> Put them on hold, Jeremiah. Yeah, put them on hold. Can you That's hold? Hard. How are you? Good. Okay. How are you? Okay. So, so, are you? okay. so the next question is. Here. It's a one minute. It's a one minute. Mr. Smith. Before entering this race, what was your level of participation in the Lake REC or the RPOF? Mine was a three-year stint back in 2010, 2011, 2012 when the party was aligned with the community. Um, I appreciate your laugh. I don't know what that was for, but um, I don't think that the party has united by any means, and they've gone 
completely opposite of what we should be doing <coughs> as a community. Lake County is beautiful. Lake County is wonderful. We have loving people here, mm -hmm. and all we do is breed hate in this party, and it's got to change. So that's the only reason I'm sitting here today, because I know I can make the change. I know that we can do better as a community. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. okay. Same you question. Want yeah, you want me to read it again? Not heard it. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, you know, that's the question that I would think I should have asked so I could kind of get you, but I'm not doing that. Let me tell you, Jonathan, I don't care that Jonathan hasn't been as active as maybe Chuck and I. I don't care. I want people like him. That's not, it's like I get this sometimes, oh, you shouldn't have an opinion on something because you're not a veteran. No, I'm an American. I have the same rights as veterans, right? Now, God bless you. You need to be honored and recognized because of certain things you did, but we all have rights. He has a right to run. I think I love this guy. If, I mean, I'm not going to say I hope he wins over Chuck. I love Chuck too, right? But it won't break my heart at all if he wins. And I will not beat him up because of that. That's not fair, uh, I don't think. It is a valid concern, and I think it's a question. You, it, it, I'm glad it was brought up. But nevertheless, this is what I'm looking for. I, I don't want a bunch of old guys like me and Chuck all the time, right? We need balance. We need maturity. That's the thing with Dan Webster. Look, I love Sabatini as a person. I love his family. I still do. You don't think I do, but I, I hope he'll come back and be the guy I used to think he was. And maybe it's down there. He's just, you know, whatever. But Stop John attacking. Thing, huh? Stop attacking. Really? I'll leave it. I'm not. I'm, I'm actually saying nice. I said I love the guy. That's not up, bro. Thank but you. nevertheless, Thank don't don't beat this guy up because of that. Thank you. Quote splitter. Thank you. Chuck. <laughs> Um, I started in, uh, we, we were in Osceola County for a few years, and I started, um, I was actually kind of uh, introduced to a Trump club down there in celebration, and uh, that kind of moved me into the LCR, or the OCREC, uh, Osceola County REC. Um, I was there for a couple of years. Uh, we moved uh, uh, into Lake County uh, going on five years ago was immediately uh, involved with the South Lake Republican Club and shortly after that um, joined the REC. And, and I think I was at two, two meetings when um, uh, all of a sudden I found myself running for the District 1 representative. So even before I was District 1, I was working in Claremont and in uh, uh, Groveland for uh, doing the uh, voter registration things. But once I got a whole, I was involved in, and, and received the uh, the District 1 representative, uh, it almost became all of, all me. No one else all of a sudden uh, seemed to be wanting to do that. I guess, you know, once, you, once somebody else comes in, they, you, you raise to a higher level and you don't do stuff anymore. Uh, well, I, I'm still doing it. I, and I just did the, uh, the Groveland uh, uh, Founders Day, a nine-day event by myself at the tent all day. Didn't even, have to, didn't even have a chance to go to the bathroom. So, uh, what else am I doing? Not only just the R, uh, LCREC, but the Republican Liberty Caucus and the Florida Republican, 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 Republican Assembly. Theory. I am out yeah. with the grassroots people, and I do agree, I do agree that we need okay. unity in the party. The problem is, the unity is not within us. We are united, except for maybe a few who feel like the bosses are the boss of the party. They tell us what to do. No, no, they are our representatives. Mm -hmm. We're the boss. That's we right. are the sovereigns. We need to figure that out. Thank okay, thank you. Can we do one more? Yes. We have one yes. more to end it all. Okay, and we really appreciate these guys giving us our time. Thank you. Um, in 2010 to 2014, we had a strong Tea Party that had a lot of young Republicans. Why do you think that changed? We were no longer attractive to the next generation. We're not attractive at all. We, um, when I would go to REC meetings up till last year, this year, when I go to an REC meeting, it's fights, it's negativity. It's not a place that feels yes. like home. It feels like we are broken. So when you bring even guests there, and they look at you and say, why would you bring me to this? I have to apologize, and we have to leave. We had to leave whenever we were in, um, we did the thing over at uh, Mission Inn, Howie. It was brutal. It was disgusting, the way we treat each other. We're humans. We're civilized human beings. We're professionals. But we don't act like it within our party. And that's got to change. And I'll tell you, you, you bring up the REC and the RPOF. I will tell you right now, I spend more time in Tallahassee than these gentlemen right here do. I will be in D.C. in three weeks talking about our county, talking about our agriculture community, pitching our community. I do work for the Republican Party. 
Just because I'm not part of the clique doesn't mean that I don't work for this party. Good deal. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, what was the question again? Uh, in 2010 to 2014, oh, yeah. tea party. Okay. the Tea Party. Well, you guys go get a kick out of this. Uh, Y'all want a history lesson? Okay. I'll, a short was, one. I'm okay. Well, short one. 2009, 9-10. You know who the <coughs> starters of the Tea Party were? Anybody know who the yes. two main speakers were? You were there, I think, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Anybody think? Uh, Solomon. Uh, you, uh, no, no, I'm talking about in Washington, D.C. Oh. Oh. There was a senator and a U.S. representative who were the keynote speakers on the Capitol steps. I was 20 feet from both of them. Do y'all remember who it was? Mm -hmm. Jim DeMint, who's a good conservative out of South Carolina, who shortly got out of politics. Y'all should know the other. Mike Pence. What the Tea Party was then is now the rhinos or the establishment of today, and worse. This guy threw Trump under the bus, right? And, and I could do a thing on Pence. I, I know him not real well, but I know, I know his personality. I know people that, know him, that grew up with him. Bottom line is, this is what happened to the Tea Party. It lost its way in a lot of respects. Now, it slowly morphed into this kind of loose knit America first. I, honestly, guys, I don't know what that means anymore because it goes from crazy people like Laura Loomer to very common sense people like Dan Whiff. They're all, they all fit in a thing because they're constitutional conservatives. Here's the big thing, and I'll tell you besides local, there's, two lo there's one Time's local up. issue real quick. North Time's Lake up. Hospital Tax and District, if you're for the continuation of that, <laughs> you're a rhino. You're a terrible rhino, okay? You're the worst of the rhinos. And if you're for killing babies in the womb, you're even worse than that. You're a Democrat. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Do you remember the question? Uh, uh, yeah, because uh, I wasn't here at that time, so um, I, I can only speak to what's happening now. Um, uh, you might all, I'm sure you all know Bill uh, Sigenthaler. You may possibly know his uh, daughter, Raven Sigenthaler, who is uh, doing amazing things for the teenage Republicans. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so we are um, advocating for the young people. Young people are coming along. Um, but when I, the more I'm around Lake County people, I, I find this person was a was a Tea Party person, this party a person was a Tea Party person, this party was a Tea Party person, and and I began to find you know the Tea Party wherever it went, it appears that at least the people, the Tea Party in Lake County have come to the REC. That's right. And that's why the REC is as bold as it is, I think, because the Tea Party is the REC. And so when you look at the people who attack the REC, you're attacking, those people are attacking the Tea Party. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys all did a fabulous right. job. Yeah. Let's go sell some tires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have or, or, three or great candidates, guys. Grass, whatever you're saying. This gave you a taste. So. And I'm happy to hang out and um, answer questions because I gave you guys a good bit of my time. And I've been doing something else with explanation of natural law. I'm going to take it all the way back to um, Mount Sinai, <laughs> when we got the Ten Commandments, and Babylon, where natural law began. <clears throat> I'm not going to do that today. But I will talk a little bit about what the problem with our nation is, and our problem is we have stepped away from natural law. When did it happen? It started happening... Do we step away from God? Did you as opposed can, can, to stepping away from natural See, that, that's the interesting thing. The interesting, you know, we can you move we over this way, please? Uh, there, there, everybody's playing around over okay. there. When you frame the narrative, we step away from God, what's the first thing that happens? Well, God and country, you know, God and uh, religion and politics has got to be separate. <clears throat> The reality, again, when I when I do my three thirty minute expose, I'll I'll discuss that more directly. But the reality is, we separate from natural law, which again is defined as the laws of nature and nature's God. Okay, so what happened? What what? How did that happen? Well, in the uh, in the mid eighteen hundreds, we started getting some Supreme Court decisions that. Um, that altered the concept. The way I explain it is that I want to teach the true boundaries that separate the state from the church. 
It's the state that should have been separated from the church. So what the, what the Democrats do is they go into the church hill, church mountain, and they take morality and they politicize it. And then they tell the church, I've got nothing to say about this, this is politics. I'm sorry, no, it's religion, and you shouldn't have any part of it. So let me get back to natural law. Uh, in the early 1900s, there were a group of people, about 100 people, that got together to discuss how could we possibly separate the, the nations of our, the laws of our nation from the Judeo-Christian value system. And if, if you recall, uh, time-wise, uh, not too long after that, or right in that general area, um, the, uh, or, uh, 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 the origin of species, well, who was the guy? He's not, my name, his name is... Uh, Charles Darwin. Darwin, Darwin. So, uh, Charles. yeah. Uh, and so the concept of evolution was you know, getting people's attention. Well, if we're evolving, maybe our laws should evolve. And so there was a gentleman, uh, I won't remember his name, but he at the time was the president of Harvard, and he, uh, uh, this is all my notes, uh, and I'm not really good with, with names as I already explained with Darwin. I should have been able to pull Darwin up just like that, right? Um, he hired another gentleman, and, his, and the purpose of, uh, of his uh, taking hold of, of Harvard Law School was to uh, implement an evolving form of law called case law. So what happens is, a judge makes a decision in a case, and then the next time that kind of a case comes up, the next judge has got to look at what the first judge said, and you know, he doesn't have to be exact, but you know, it should be like in that general area, and then over time, the laws just evolve. They evolve into whatever a judge determined it was. Well, let's go back to the Constitution. Let me ask you a quick question. Uh, we have three branches of government. Which branch of government was given sole authority to make our laws. Legislative. That would be the legislative branch. Now let me ask you another question. What branch of government are judges? Judicial. Judicial. I'm sorry. Legislative. The legislators are the only ones that can make law. But judges' decisions change our law? That is wrong. Not right. No. Okay. So. What about stare decisis? Stare decisis, I mean, you've got to have some rational foundation for, for you know, one judge decides this way and another judge decides that way. Stare decisis. Why, when is stare decisis valid? Stare decisis is, uh, you know, this is, this is the way it's going to be. This is it. This is how we look at this law. So everyone else should kind of look at it the same way. Well, there are times when stare decisis is valid. When the decision was a constitutional decision in the first place. Exactly. But if it wasn't a constitutional uh, uh, decision, what are what are uh, what are our options? What are what can we do about it? And the answer to that is nullification. The nullification is a very interesting concept. And back in 2023, the uh, Texas uh, Tennessee House passed uh, a. A law on uh, how they were going to to, to uh, determine how to uh, <coughs> what did I just say nullify <laughs> how to nullify supreme, uh, federal laws that they felt were unconstitutional. It passed the House. It didn't pass the Senate. This year, in uh, January of this year, Utah did both House and Senate pass. Uh, a methodology on how to nullify federal laws that they found unconstitutional. Now, Texas is doing the same thing. Uh, quite frankly, um, I don't know if you've ever um, heard of uh, her name. Will uh, come to me in just a second. Um, she's over in Texas. Um, uh, Chris Ann Hall. Yeah, uh, I, I met Chris Ann Hall. She lives here. She lives in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Did I say Texas? I meant yeah. Tampa. Yep. Uh, a T word. My brain, my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she lives in Tampa, right? 
I, I spoke with her, uh, her about it because uh, when I came out, I, I actually talked, asked her if she knew anything about the uh, Tennessee law, and she didn't. So I, I sent it to her and had some, some interaction with her. I said, well, you know, does the state really have to pass a nullification bill in order to nullify? And she said, no, not really, which is exactly what I thought. But the bottom line is, states are beginning to wake up to what's really going on. And, um, uh, and again, I, as I said, Texas is doing the same thing. Texas is trying to just say, look, the federal government does not have the authority to allow our state to be invaded. Okay? My assessment, they came up with that idea maybe, I don't know, 20 or so years too late. <laughs> yeah. But at least, I mean, look. <laughs> At least they're doing it. So what, what's happening, and, and the, uh, the clip that I read about the Utah State, uh, the Utah law was, you know, all of a sudden this law is bringing this whole concept of nullification back to the forefront. <clears throat> now you, again, why, you, why would you need nullification? You need nullification for overreach. When the federal government comes to the states and they basically want to do something the Constitution doesn't allow them to do, then the states have the opportunity to say, no, you can't do that here. Our own governor understands this. During the uh, COVID thing, he said, no, you're not going to close our schools. You're not going to make us wear masks. No, that's nullification. Okay? He didn't need a law. He just did it. Okay? <clears throat> so, um, then all of a sudden, they pass a law, our state passes a law, usurping the authorities of cities and counties. Your cities and counties can no longer decide where apartment buildings go up, where low-income housing goes up. Uh, they can go up anywhere. You, they, they can't even determine what, uh, the, uh, what issues have to be resolved, what land issues or whatever, uh, any kind of infrastructure. They can't make any decisions at all if, if the... Uh, the construction company that wants to build the uh, apartment complex on a certain piece of land that's available, it's already granted. How do you fix that? Nullification. You, repeal it. you need to tell your county officials, we're not doing this here. Yeah. You have overstepped your authority. Now there may be some legal issues there, and you know the biggest problem is money, right? But at some point, we have to demand they follow the law, even if it costs us. Because it's going to cost you. Because when the, it, we've already had uh, communities saying that the Live Local Act has destroyed their finances. So what happens when a city's finances are destroyed? they got to raise taxes, yeah. right? Can what happens when they that? raise taxes so stinking high, you can't afford to live in your house? You're living in low income. Good thing is, the good thing they built it in the first place, right? Because you're going to need it. Can you explain what you mean by the destroyed the finances of the cities? The um, what the uh, the act does is give huge <coughs> tax breaks to the companies okay. that are building these things, and the and the people who uh, who uh, rent the facilities. Um, all these different tax revenues are, have just vanished. They've vanished. Just, uh, and and uh, again, I have a hard time remembering from one minute to the next what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's in the bill, uh, and, uh, and, and unfortunately it's a 90-page bill, and there's all kinds of other issues that you have to uh, go to. Um, if you really want to know uh, everything you need to know about the Live Local Act, uh, the, the what? The, uh, you, wait, what did you say? The, the what? Act? Live, live Local, local Act. Act. Live I local mean, it Act. sounds nice, but yeah. it's not. Yeah. 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 Well, Live Local. Usually, this is what it. This is the re again. This is the Obama thing. You don't have to go anywhere. <coughs> Wherever you live, you should be able to walk to your local McDonald's, and they might even let you have a nice little restaurant close by. You don't have to go anywhere. 
I mean, look, traffic is so bad, why do you want to go anywhere? So now you don't need your car. You know, and you look at, there's all kinds of communities like this. They build the apartment complex around the shopping mall. Right? Why would oh, you have to go anywhere? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What does that do? That just continues, continues to erode our freedom. Do you, Do you want to read it? Do you want to read it? Wait, it's 90 pages. Um, it's I'm sorry, it's 90 pages. I'm not going to read it. There's no summary. No, it's just a summary. Yeah, yeah well, it, you know what? The, the problem with a summary, oh, a summary that, summarizes that, the things they want you to know about. Yeah. And there's plenty, there, are plenty yeah, yeah. Of, there are a few candy sticks oh, okay. in the Live Local app. So if you say, oh, they let you do this and they let you do that, isn't that there's wonderful? A sliver of yeah, truth. but they are putting you in prison. Putting you in prison. Slavery. I have a question now uh, about your. Did I ever finish natural law? I probably didn't. Oh, right. I may get back to it. Well, when you're elected to be a councilman, uh, state, state, state committee, yeah, um, you'll be represented between the REC or the people in Lake County and the state or our P our POF. So, what do you think of the direction of the grassroots movement here and the local RECs? Uh, as far as interacting with the RPOF, do you like their direction or do you think it's wrong? Okay, well, um, you know, I, I've, I have had, I've, I've been going to the, R, the uh, RPOF quarterlies. As a matter of fact, that's where I got the idea. Ralph uh, started talking about, well, maybe I don't want to be state committee man, and Chuck does. You know, and he went on with his story, and I thought, I might take you up on that, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> And I said that to him back then. Um, so yeah, at the ERP of Cordelia's, you do kind of bump into a few people from other uh, counties, um, and uh, and even through the, uh, the the Trump Club that I was involved with in Celebration and uh, Osceola County. I know a lot of people Osceola County, um, uh, and um, and there's 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 a lot of similarities as to how how they think. But there's, I understand, not necessarily similarities in how they are constructed. Now, what, what would I be able to do at, at this point? I'm sure at some point I might be on some sort of committees that might give me, again, a, a voice a, a little bit higher up the food chain. But the first thing I'm going to start doing is finding out who's who and where are they from. And um, you know, what, what do you guys think of, uh, of what's happening in Lake County? Because I would like to um, infect, if you will, the other counties with the grassroots um, heart and soul that we have here in Lake County. <coughs> the concept of having a, a Republican platform, I think that, you know, you go back to the Rhino thing, well, if there's no platform that says what a Republican stands for, then if you call yourself a Republican and you stand for something, it must be Republican. I'm sorry, that's just, that's just not true. That's just not true. So, um, so am I answering your question? So, I, I want to. Do you approve of the direction? Uh, I, say the uh, Lake County. I can't. RECs? I couldn't tell. I, I disapprove of those counties that have closed RECs that won't let anybody in. I, I, I know there are a few of those out there. Um, but um, you know, I can't speak for the 67 different counties uh, here. Well, here, oh, here. For, the, for Do Lake you County. approve of like the legislative agenda and the platform? Oh, is that what you're asking? Yeah. Our yes. agenda? Yeah. I yes. totally approve of our agenda. I want I want the other county uh, uh, members, the other representatives to the RPOs from other counties to know what we're doing, so that we can help. Either they they can just take take ours and pass it in your own county. You know. It, the little bit that we ended up doing, uh, we ended up with our legislative priorities accepted by the entire state. Okay, not much happened to it, but I mean, it's better than nothing. And we have to give, we have to be the backbone. We might be the tip of the spear, the, uh, the, the uh, entity that gives Lake County, uh, uh, Florida counties a backbone. The reality is, 
the Republican Party of the, the, the legislators that call themselves Republicans are very disconnected with the citizens that call themselves Republicans. That's where the disunity yeah. is. And if you look at who is supporting my can my uh, opponents, it's the administration. It's the other side. Are you? Wouldn't we all want our legislators to be listening to us? Mm -hmm. Well, Anthony Sabatini is so angry. Now, I would love for Anthony to not be as angry as he is. I mean, I'm working on him. <laughs> I'm working on him. Um, you know, um, he has a faith, but I think it's a little skewed. Um, he, he has a, uh, an MO. I feel like it could be softened a bit. Um, but he's angry. Ralph Smith is angry. He didn't sound anything but angry. Exactly. Okay. And it didn't sound like unity for either one of those guys. Neither one of them wanted right. unity. Both of them wanted to inject the other side into the equation mm -hmm. so they could, so that they yeah. could step on the unity that is in the, uh, the Lake County uh, REC. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything we do, we we, uh, we, we vote and, and, and it's uh, approved or, or, or negated. Everybody to one or two. Exactly. Everybody to one or two. That means the one or two are not necessarily united with everybody else. Uh, so uh, what is it that you plan on doing to get more votes out there for the Republican Party exactly? Uh, okay, so so the, the bottom line is get out the vote. Yes. Well, <clears throat> I have been one of the very, very few in South Lake County that knocked on doors every Saturday that anybody knocked on doors in 2020. Uh, in 2024, uh, I mean, uh, in, in 2016, 2018, and 2020, I was knocking on the doors. Why would that change? It wouldn't change. You know, again, why do we always have to hold our nose to vote for Republicans? Mm -hmm. You know, you, we cannot vote Democrat. We can't. Flat right, out. Right. So we have to vote Republican. Okay. So no matter who ends up our representative is going to be better than the Democrats. At least the Republicans tread uh, uh, lightly until everybody's asleep. And when everybody's asleep is when they when they oh, use yeah. the shaft. But they at least know that they can't they can't come out all out Democrats. Okay, you had a, you're in a Yeah, because uh, knock, knocking on door that's nice, but all we get from knocking on doors is a promise that they'll go voting. What, what the Democrats are doing, not only they get a promise, they get a ballot signed and all that that they would put in the mail. So, 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 I, I, th I think we, we we have to change our strategy to okay. do something. Well, that would be. A, that, I think that same. would be a, a level a little bit higher than than uh, you know the, the, again. Again, you look at the Republican Party and you say to yourself, you know, they can't be this stupid. But they can. <laughs> so they must be complicit. Mm -hmm. Well. They, they, they can't be that stupid. So they must be complicit. Yeah. Let me just answer, say one thing. Who is the, do you realize what we're dealing with? We're turning, we're, we're moving toward globalism. Does anyone disagree with that? No. We're moving toward globalism. Okay, a one world government. Who is the first president of the United States that brought up the one world order? Obama. George. Uh, George Bush. George Bush. 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 Bush 41. Yes. Bush 41. Real. Bush 41. A new world. Let me ask you a question. Uh, is the Republican Party of Florida very Bush centric? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do I, have, I mean, do I have to connect all the dots? Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you have to connect the dots? <laughs> you need to get rid of these people. The other option is to convert them. And that's really the, the methodology that I would bring to the uh, 
to the state committee man position. Do you want to talk to the leadership of county party of our county parties and convince them that they can do more than they know to change the trajectory of the Republican Party in Florida. Okay, that's where I'm going. And then you need to send people like Mike Levine to the House. Because I'm telling you, if he gets there, something's going to change. <laughs> <laughs> Something is going to change. He'll lose his hat. Because, okay, my strong feeling is also that we do need Anthony in Congress. I questioned Anthony saying, why Congress? Because really, we can't fix the United States from Washington. The only place we can fix the United States is in the individual capitals of the 50 states. State sovereignty. State sovereignty is the only way we're going to stop Washington. Because if enough states, and we have the, we have the Republicans, how many Republican governors do we have? Like 37 or 38? Yeah. You want unity? You want to know what unity would be? 38 governors of 38 states saying to the, to, uh, the federal government, you can't do the, that here anymore. Mm -hmm. right. Do you understand what that would do mm -hmm. almost overnight? You know how quickly our economy altered, our, co our economy changed uh, the trajectory, uh, uh, its trajectory, before Donald Trump even stepped into the White House. All he had to do was be elected. He was elected and our entire economy began to change. Do you realize how quickly, if the Republican Party actually wanted to, to unify under Republican principles, we could change this country over night. All right. Agreed. Next question. Uh, I moved here about 18, 19 years ago. Uh, it took me uh, six months to be able to get into the Republican Party because they wouldn't even, uh, you knock on the door and there was only maybe 25 of them in it, uh, controlled with a little click. And uh, they took four months for me to get to apply to be on the REC. Uh, and my observation over all the years of all these state committee men and state committee women is that they all go there to have a great time with partying, or their yeah. spouse is there, so they sign up and get that, and they don't do anything. Uh, and so my question would be that, and I've not seen, you know, when we see people come back in, we ask for a committee man, committee woman report. We get a very minimal information that is, has got any substance to it. Uh, not like here, four action items that they're working on, and we need to do this, and so forth. And so my, and so I kind of consider it to be a joke, frankly. Uh, you know, and Ralph is one of them. He just goes and comes, and then he posts all these pictures of him with different politicians. And he tells us where to eat, you know, yeah. good restaurants. Yeah, and so um, I, I kind of consider that position as a joke. So what would you do to uh, maybe change that opinion, my opinion? Okay, well, um, what, first of all, um, excuse me. Oh. <laughs> it may be a joke. The position very well may be a joke. Okay? <laughs> okay, but we can stop it. <laughs> we finally got it. We but got even, it. We it. even if it is a joke, I intend to come back with information. I intend to let you guys know what I'm doing. If they've asked me to do anything, I'll let you know what I'm doing and how well I'm doing it. Um, I will um, uh, do my best to alter that uh, laughter, that joke, um, into something that is, is uh, tangible, something that actually is effective. You know, again, <clears throat> you need to hear this as kindly as you <laughs> I had a gentleman, that, I went to a conference, it was an all weekend conference, and, and it was so, so horrible. But the guy said one thing, and I've, I've used it a million times, and that is, please don't hear what I'm not saying. Okay? The Republican Party of Florida couldn't get as blue as it 
has if it wasn't for the leadership downstream. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we really do need to work right here downstream. <clears throat> we, we genuinely need to awaken <coughs> the leadership of the counties as they approach the RPOF. We have to do something. Now, I can't tell you, you know, when, when, when Mike says, uh, I'm going to go to Congress and pass this bill, well, you know he's not going to pass that bill. He's just going to present the bill and, and do his best to get it passed. And I'm telling you, I can't, I can't tell you I'm going to change the, uh, the, uh, uh, the spirit of the uh, uh, state committee man, state committee woman position, but I can tell you I'm going to try. I'm going to try. What we're doing here in Lake County has to be being done in the other 66 counties, at least over half of them. And if we're not talking about it, if we're ashamed of it, we're not going to talk about it. I want to talk about it. I hope that answers your question. So <coughs> let me just finish up. With natural law. Where was I going with that? Uh, you were at trial law. Talk about Charles law. Darwin, the evolution of uh, <laughs> law. Yeah, you just, you just came off Mount Sinai, I think. Yeah. 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 I, I think, actually, I think I did. I, I got into, you know, what happened, and I just couldn't remember the names of the, uh, the president of Harvard and the guy he hired. Did you write a book about it? Did I write a book about it? There are books written about it, and I've read them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and um, and I teach I teach about them. I mean, the, I do the, a twelve week constitution uh, course, and I, and what do I need to teach it? I need people to take the course in some place. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Lorraine took it. Tom Bell took it. Mike Levine took it. Um, we did. Yeah, and and Debbie Brzezinski took it. And um, it does open your eyes. It opens your eyes to really why we're here and what. See, we don't just teach the Constitution. We teach, first of all, our, the history of our founding. Who knows the first political document ever penned on the continent of America? The Mayflower Complex. Um, one of the first five, I think, words in the, in the Mayflower Con. In the name of God, six, amen. Mm -hmm. Our nation was founded expressly for the propagation of the Christian faith, which was kind of where you were going. I was kind of separating that because I want you to make sure you realize not everybody in America at our founding were Christians. But everyone in America did understand the concept of natural law. You just don't kill each other. You don't punch each other. You don't take each other's stuff. You don't mess with your neighbor's wife. You might get shot. Right. You know, too bad we can't do that today. Did everybody who wrote the Constitution were of Christian faith? Um, well, we, there, there were no Muslims there. We, defined, <laughs> we go through that. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. We, we go root, through all of that. The root of our Constitution is Christian faiths. The Constitution you, is utterly, utterly Judeo-Christian in its foundation. Uh, right. Utterly. There's, there's just nothing. As a matter of fact, who knows the first war that we uh, uh, fought as America? Well, I'm talking about the Revolution. Indian Wars. Indian Wars. 18, okay, 18 Indian Wars. Indians? Indians? Uh, I get the Spanish. Spanish-American War? No. No. no uh, uh, oh, oh, the Indian, the Seminole Wars? Oh, wait a minute. Okay, sign them all up. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> If you say the rebellion, there's another count. The, yeah, the it's point, the shame the point rebellion. I was trying, the point I was trying to make is that the Republican Party has steered away from all the Christian values because there's so many, so much dissension amongst us. Everybody's fighting. Um, we promote, you know, no killing and abortion, but we'll, um, um, you know, 
um, bash one another, like you say, somebody says, Sabatini's angry. So we'll bash one another. <laughs> I said he's angry. <laughs> I said he's angry. I mean, that, uh, I, quite frankly, I don't consider that a, a, an insult. Mm -mm. I, 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 he's angry because he should be angry. Yeah, we all should be but we're angry. Just, I'm just, the point I'm trying to make is we're steering away from the Christian values of right. this country. That That's right. Was the Democrats have, have totally sold they, out. Yeah. The Republicans are selling out. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point. Now, the answer to the question is the Barbary Pirates War. Do you understand who the Barbary pirates were? Yes. They were Muslims. Yes. Muhammadans. <laughs> That's where the Marines got their uh, nickname, Leathernecks. Why? Because they had to put big leather collars around. Because guess what? The Muslims back then had the same issue that they do now. They just love cutting people's heads off. Yeah. <laughs> really? So you understand? Not even, not even um, religious freedom doesn't have boundaries. We do have boundaries. And guess what the boundaries for religious freedom are? The same boundaries that our nation has. The laws of nature and nature's God. Natural law. If your religion violates natural law, you don't have the freedom to exercise that religion in our nation. Anybody have any ideas of any Religions that do that? Islam. Yeah, Muslim. Islam. Okay. Honor killings. Um, Scientology. Chinese. China. Sharia law. Well, that is, that's not uh, China. Is not a religion. China is a religion. Oh, yeah. 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 Party yeah. And, uh, yeah. So um, I hope I'm. I hope I don't have to connect all the dots. Mm -hmm. But it's it's nice. I mean, that's kind of what I do. I use the, the dot, I use the, the illustration of, of the dot to dot children dot to dot, and I use the other illustration where you, you know you got to trace the the um, the tunnel and to get to the yeah, end. Yeah. Well, this is how you how you you uh, do that puzzle, the tracing. Of, you can't put your pencil down, and you can't make any you know going to any mm. kind of uh, dead ends or whatever. This is how you f you. Successfully navigate that little puzzle every time, and never, ever, ever go down the wrong line. This mm -hmm. is how you do it. Mm -hmm. You start at the end. Very good. You start at the end and trace it backwards, and you will take, trace it right to the beginning, and never, ever miss a chip a turn. So what is what does that mean? That means <clears throat> there's only one way you can screw up. And that's not know, knowing where you're going. If you know where you're going, you will get there. The Republican Party knows exactly where it's going. And it's not going where the Republicans in the Republican Party want it to go. Mm -hmm. We have to do something about that. Vote for Chuck. <laughs> Any other questions? I mean, I'm happy That's to That's very good. Very good, Chuck. Yeah. Thanks, Chuck. Yes, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Chuck. What about our school board now that they're, yeah. they're going to support the Sanders? And, and, Wait, and I got one more question. Grand juries. You got any comments about grand juries? Because this state apparently makes it extremely hard. And I come from California where they have them, and it's, uh, I was just watching a commentary, somebody saying from here that they couldn't get even one started, but yet in California, where I was, they've got even the manuals online and everything. You can find out exactly how to request and get a grand jury to investigate, for instance, election integrity, so forth. Have you got any background or information on that? Um, I, I don't think I have any background on it. Information, um, I probably know some people to talk to. About it. Um, okay. And I'd be happy to chat with you, but no, I, uh, that would be a little bit above my constitutional uh, uh, base there. Thank you.